Jen Saki, welcome to Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, Should we welcome. go hike? Let's go hike. Let's go. So hiking is a part of your life. It's a part of what you do on a regular basis. How often I, do you hike? Well, I grew up hiking this park. This part your parents of Rock took Creek you park. hiking? Yes. Or I would go with other people, but uh, yeah. Uh, I remember this area well from when I was a kid. Um, and um, we took all of our kids hiking here in Rock Creek Park. And it's really an absolutely magical place. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see with very thick tree canopy. Mm -hmm. This is the boundary bridge connecting Maryland to mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. Uh, when Donald Trump was inaugurated and uh, my colleague John Lewis called for a boycott and we all decided not to go. I instead went on a hike and I invited all my constituents <laughs> to come That feels on a healthier. Hike. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, you, you just entered remission for cancer, which is amazing news. How are you feeling? Well, thank you for asking, Jen. I feel, um, well, hugely better from what I was feeling like during the thick of chemo. It was a brutal process. But um, my neuropathy is gone. My nausea is gone. My appetite is back big time. And I'd say my energy is up around 80% now. You know, I'm back in the land of the healthy. So I'm very grateful for that. You've kind of brought bandanas back to cool again, I would say. <laughs> you got one from a pretty famous person, Stephen Van Dant, right? No, I well, didn't get one. I got a dozen. Oh, a dozen from him. What was yeah. your reaction when you got those? I couldn't believe it. I mean, what had happened was I, I put one on when my hair really started to fall out with the chemo. Mm -hmm. And then a reporter said to me, uh, you know, what are you doing? Are you dressing up like a pirate? I said, oh, I'm dressing up like little Stephen Van Zandt, you know, because... I always thought it was a cool look, and I figured that would be a way to do it. He saw the article, and then he sent me a big bag of these bandanas, and he said these are, uh, they're, they're not a present, they're a hand-me-down. Oh, but he like did. he had used them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay. What else do you love in terms of music? Um, I love R.E.M. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm showing my age here, but I'm kind of uh, a classic young rock kind of guy. Young people can love R.E.M. too, it's okay. Well... I'm glad to hear Very it. Very young people. The, the young people, especially the young women on my staff, they love Taylor Swift. Oh, so yes. I've been trying to educate myself. Now, I know that you were a big Shakespeare fan because I've heard you quote Shakespeare. Yes. How did that start? Do you have a favorite play, sonnet? Well, um, yeah, I guess it started in high school when I first started reading the plays, including you know, Romeo and Juliet and Twelfth Night and the play whose name you can't pronounce uh, <laughs> publicly because it's not, it's not good luck to do so. We have a great Shakespeare for Young People group in my district oh. called Lumina. And I've written some, I've rewritten some of the plays for the purposes of, of the young, young people. people producing them. And that's a lot of fun. What's so beautiful about the Shakespeare plays, of course, is the language and the speeches. And when the kids learn portions of them and they understand what they mean, mm -hmm. then they can really go to town. And that's um, a wonderful feeling to see the light bulbs go off when they understand what's happening in the play. It makes and what it come to life. Should we sit down for a few minutes? Sure. sure. So this is a place you have spent a lot of time with your family hiking, including your son, Tommy. Yes. How did you connect with him in the park here hiking? Well, Tommy had come home um, in the spring semester of 2020 when they closed Harvard Law School down. He was a second year student. And so he was basically taking his law classes from our basement. And I mean, that was a profoundly difficult time for him and for young people yeah. across the country to be so isolated. Yeah. So anyway, I, during the daytime, oftentimes Tommy and I would just come to the park and take a long hike. There was nowhere else really to go. Mm -hmm. And after we lost Tommy on the last day of 2020, um, you know, I'd come back to the park and get to recall, recall the times that we had together and, and think about him. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a hard time for our family. It's yeah. been a long road. Tommy said often it's hard to be human and it is hard to be human and he called on everybody to be as 
compassionate and as decent as possible to everybody. Sounds like a remarkable person. You've talked about a letter he wrote you and how that's impacted you and how you live your life. You mean the farewell note yeah. that he left us? Yeah, it said, um, it said, please forgive me, my illness won today. Look after each other, the animals and the global poor for me. All my love, Tommy. And he gave all of his love all of the time. Um, but um, he was battling depression for the last several years. And it was very, very hard, as people will know, who've gone through that in their families. And it was a dark time. I've obviously been very committed to championing the sorts of things that Tommy believed in and also defending uh, our democracy and people's rights. And those were things very important to him. In the period of time um, after you lost Tommy was also the insurrection and the attack on our nation's capital. Your daughter was with you. That feels like just a lot of trauma happening in one period of time. How, how did you even move forward? Well, I mean, you know, when you're going through any of those traumas, um, you don't really experience yourself as having any choice other than to go through it and to try to respond the best that you can. Um, and in, in some ways, the shocking, catastrophic loss of Tommy was a certain kind of armor against the violence and the chaos of January 6th because I'd already suffered the absolute worst thing I could ever imagine. And when this is going on, uh, I just experienced uh, a lot of anger and a lot of wonder about how exactly this all happened and who set it up. Um, I didn't feel fear at that point. I mean, this was a violent assault on our democracy, on our families, on our staff, on the members, on the vice president of the United States. Um, these people set themselves at war with the constitutional order. I mean, Trump has been a test on our system, no question, in so many ways. There, there's no precedent for so many of these actions that he has been in, in DHN. Is our system prepared for that? He has been like a stress test for uh, the constitutional system. Um, and he's done things that no president has ever done before, including waging uh, an insurrection and an attempted coup against the government. And it, look, it's up to us. Every generation has to decide how to choose. I mean, will, will the 21st century be a century of democracy and freedom and a use of all of the extraordinary new technologies to expand human happiness and prosperity? Or is it going to be the use of the technologies by bullies and autocrats and tyrants to oppress people. Mm -hmm. And you can see it going in either direction. I also want to know if there is a work of Shakespeare, because there are a lot of tragedies in there, yeah. that reminds you of the time we're living in today. Well, there's a passage in The Tempest, hell is empty and all the devils are here. And I've thought about that a number of times <laughs> feels applicable uh, in the last days. few years. You know, you could read Shakespeare just for hours and hours and not find any trace of judgment or prejudice in them. It's all about understanding humanity in its full three-dimensional beauty and complexity and depth. Um, and that's why Shakespeare is profoundly comforting to me. Thank you for taking me to one of your favorite spots, which now I think is one of my favorite spots. Well, you're welcome anytime. The pleasure is all mine, Jen Saki. And it's free here. It's That's free. the great thing about a public park. I appreciate it. I'm coming back. Oh, please Thank come you back. so much again. Thank you.